Welcome back to Theme Park Spark. Please like and subscribe. Back in December 2012, my husband and I traveled from Los Angeles to Sydney, Australia to celebrate our fifth wedding anniversary. It was a bucket list trip for both of us, and we spent three wonderful weeks exploring Australia in the weeks leading up to Christmas. This year, in 2023, I decided to compile our photos and videos to relive the experience and share it with you. Be sure to check out my Australia playlist to see all of the videos. Yesterday, I shared highlights of our trip to the Great Barrier Reef. Today, I'm sharing the entire semi-submersible submarine ride around the reef, which includes facts and information about the Great Barrier Reef. The Great Barrier Reef. And the Great Barrier Reef is the most extensive reef system in the world. It stretches a distance of about 2,300 kilometres from the northern tip of Queensland right down to Bundaberg in southern Queensland. And the Great Barrier Reef isn't just one reef, but about 2,900 individual reefs. So we're just seeing one of the, a small section of one of those 2,900 reefs out here today. Now coral reefs are made by millions and millions of tiny little animals called coral polyps. And it's the hard corals that build the hard reef structure that you see out here before you. So hard coral polyp is a tiny little soft bodied animal. A bit like a sea anemone or an upside down jellyfish. And those soft bodied animals build or secrete the hard calcium carbonate or limestone skeletons around themselves and they live inside those hard homes for protection. Now here on the Great Barrier Reef, there's anywhere between about 360 to 400 different species of hard corals. But for us though, the easiest way to figure out their common names is to describe how those coral colonies are growing. Now you probably know some that have had a branching growth form, Pretty easy, those ones we can call the branching corals. The ones that are flat and resemble a plate or a table are called the plate or table corals. The ones that look like a brain, but you can probably guess they are called the brain corals. So most it's not rocket science, just describe what you are looking at and that's likely to be the correct common name for these hard coral colonies. You probably also see some soft coral colonies out your windows. They're the ones that are moving about a bit with the water currents. The soft corals are soft. They don't have a hard skeleton. Instead, they have another way to protect themselves. They will contain something bad tasting within their soft tissues. Also within their soft tissues are tiny little sharp spiky things called spicules. And they're a little bit like shards of fiberglass. So the fish takes a bite, tastes yucky, all sharp and spiky, not a great meal, that fish won't have another bite, it's learned its lesson.
do out for us as sand. So the majority of sand down there below us has been put up by a parrotfish. There's a couple there on the edge of the reef floor, with the brown and yellow tail and the partly coloured ones, and they've got different types of parrotfish. Usually see them with their heads down and their bottoms up. So if you see fish heads down, bottoms up feeding, partly the coloured one going past their down, those are the schools of parrotfish. Now if they are feeding nearby to you while you're snorkeling today, if you put your ears under the water, you'll be able to hear them chomping away, scraping off that algae. In fact, I did say that they are producing sand for us. The biggest parrotfish is called the bumpkin parrotfish. It can grow up to about one and a half metres in length. And at that size, most bumpkin parrotfish have been recorded to pull out up to five tonnes of sand per fish per year. So huge, huge volumes of sand are being produced by those parrotfish. Now you probably noticed that the roof waters drop off quite steeply in parts, and the deepest point of this channel is about 60 or 70 metres deep. It does get pretty deep pretty quickly. As the tides change, they get quite a strong currents flowing through this area. Now those currents bring lots of plankton. So if you look through the water column, you might be able to see lots of um, specks. Some of that is going to be sand or sediment, but a lot of that is plankton that the fish are feeding on. A lot of these fish will hang out facing into the current. They'll open and close their mouths, and their food will go straight into their mouth with that current. It's a nice easy way for them to get their food source. Pretty lucky here on the Great Barrier Reef. 
and ring the bell because I have a lot more videos about Australia coming up, including visiting Hamilton Island and getting to see a baby koala. You don't want to miss that. See you next time.